fucked up so much. Maybe there's so many people wouldn't have been hurt, including my mom and my dad and my grandma, disappointed over and over again. If I would have just listened. So I gotta give say one thing to all of you. When I was your age, I was locked up. I was gang banging and all over the world. I would never come to a place like this. And I gotta say, I'm gonna take off my hat and say I'm proud of every single one of you. Like seriously, you guys are already making big moves. I was doing punk stuff back then. Y'all are doing adult stuff. Y'all are being young men and young ladies by coming to this event this weekend because when I was your age, I was all living in the world. So can I get a round of applause, everybody, that they showed up this weekend. They could have said no. They could have said no. You know, they could have said no. I said no a million times. I would punch my uncle. He would try to take me to a retreat with Victory Outreach, you know? Man, get the... They would try to put me in the car and I would go in the car. Strong in the spirit, us Catholics move a little different. Yeah, we pray a little different. Trust me in the end, it makes a big difference. Ah, who's that next to me? That's my blessed mother, that's Mary. Yup, yeah, she my bestie. Better watch your mouth, you don't want problems with my bestie. This I turn up, not turn down. Satan is the only thing that we gon' turn down. This I turn up, not turn down. Satan is the only thing that we gon' turn down. Y'all better. Okay, here we go. Amen. And what's the first thing we do when the speaker comes up here? Pray. We pray. So everybody remove your headwork, um, hats, hoodies, everything. We're going to extend our arm to Eric. We're going to place ourselves in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God, we thank you for Eric's press briefing. We thank you for giving us this morning, this cold morning in which we thought it was going to be raining, but you still gave us the sunshine. You gave us some clouds. You gave us some cold weather. We thank you for that. We thank you for Eric being here for his time, leaving his home, and being here present with us. We ask that you utilize him to speak to us. Whatever you want us to hear, do it through him. Use him as your stencil so that you can get to our hearts, to our minds, to our ears. We ask this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Good morning. Let's, let's do this. Can I get a little bit of music, please? I want to pray for you guys. Because what I'm hoping today is that the Holy Spirit, that's what it's about this weekend, right? That you guys learn your gifts. That you guys learn your skills. That you learn your purpose and why you were created. Because it took a long time for me to find my purpose. I had to go through ups and downs for that to happen. But before we start, I can't do nothing. Because I'm a nobody trying to tell everybody all about somebody that saved my soul. That's Jesus Christ. You guys were giving him praise right now. Que viva Cristo Rey. Que viva. Que viva Cristo Rey. Que viva. Que viva Our Lady of Guadalupe. Que viva. Oh, come on now. Let's go, somebody. So right now I'm going to do a prayer. Anybody, everybody take off your hats, please. Hello, 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 hello. Can you guys hear me now? Here we go. So I'm going to walk around. Can you guys just please close your eyes as we're going to pray. And we're going to call upon the Holy Spirit to be our guide today. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. My intentions today are for you guys to learn something, but that you open up your hearts, that God may speak to you, that he may speak to your hearts, to your minds, to your souls, that you may learn something, even if it feels like, what's this guy talking about? He's kind of getting a little overboard there, that a seed is planted inside your heart and we are gonna ask the Holy Spirit to move in your lives so that you don't just be teenagers, but that you're Catholic teenagers that allows your Catholic faith to, sh to show on your shoulders, to show on your sleeves, so that you'll be proud of being Catholic. You'll be proud of Mama Mary. You'll be proud of salvation in Christ and the cross and not just when you're at a retreat. I'm not gonna walk around in circles. I was gonna continue doing that, but I'm not going to. Just keep your eyes closed, please, because it feels like the mic's going off. But I want you to grow so that you know that Christ died on the cross, not just when you're in mass. It's kind of loud, that one, huh? Yeah. How's this one sound? Man. I'm still loud. Let me hold it down here for you guys, all right? Because I'm just a loud person. It sounds like these mics are low. But I want you to grow today. So please embrace what God has. God, I ask you to speak with every single one of these souls today, Lord, 
that they may embrace your word, that they may embrace your love, and not just the thought that on Sundays I go to Mass, but that every single day they need you, they need the Holy Spirit, they need the Father in their lives, and God, you've given us a church 2,000 years ago that we're all a part of right here, Lord, and we thank you for those sacrifices. Come, Holy Spirit, fill our hearts with your holy gifts. Let our weakness be penetrated with your strength this very day, that we may fulfill all the duties of our state consciously, and that we may do what is right and just. Let our love be such as to offend nobody and hurt no one's feelings, so generosity as to pardon sincerely any wrong done to me. Help us to forgive others, Lord, the same way you forgave us. Help us to learn what mercy is, Help us to not be bullies. Help us not to pick on people. Help us to defend those that are in our schools. The Holy Spirit, come down on these children. These are the next leaders right now. These are the next defenders of the church because we know the enemy's real, Lord. Assess, assist us, Holy Spirit, in all our trials. Enlighten us today in any ignorance. Advise all of us, these young men, these young ladies, and guide them in their doubts. Strengthen them in their weaknesses, any confidence issues they have, self-esteem, the, the feeling of being loved. I just ask you to be right now, Holy Spirit, be inside of them, help them with all their needs and protect them from any type of temptation that the enemy may try to put in front of them after they leave this retreat. Because we know the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And it says he's like a roaring lion in search of someone to devour. So I ask you to be with every single one of these souls and console all them in their afflictions. Graciously hear me, Lord. I'm crying out to you right now that, that you open the eyes to their heart. That you open the eyes to their mind. That the Holy Spirit inside of them opens them up to be vulnerable and to listen and to think I'm not just saying blank words but that you're moving through your love Lord assist us today to live a holy life and to grow in goodness and in grace amen and everybody repeat after me I want to do a unity prayer I'm going to say the words and just copy after me my adorable Jesus, my adorable Jesus. may our feet journey together May our, hands gather in unity. May our hands gather in unity. May our hearts beat in unison. May our, beat in unison. May, our May our souls be in harmony. May our thoughts be as one. May our, be as one. May our, ears, listen May our ears listen to the silence together. May our glances profoundly penetrate each other. May our lips pray together, May our lips pray together. to gain mercy from the Eternal Father. Amen. Mercy from the Father. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, guys. Appreciate that. You guys mind listening to a little story right now today? You guys mind about that? It wasn't always like this, so I come up here, you guys see the nice suit, rolling up here, I got my little banner right there. But it wasn't always like that growing up. I wasn't always Catholic. I'm actually a convert to the faith. But I'm going to start from the beginning on how I got here, and then I'm going to teach you some tricks that it's allowed me to live in victory and beat down the devil every time, every time, he, every time he tries to attack me or my family. I can slap the devil around because the church is giving me gifts. But when I was younger, I was raised in San Bernardino, California. Anybody heard of San Bernardino? Anybody heard about it? Yeah, yeah, cool. Kind of like San, there's areas like Santa Ana, you know? Like the areas out here in Orange County. So I was raised in the hood growing up. My dad was a gang member. My dad was a drug addict. And my dad didn't know how to be a father. My mom was a good mother, but at a young age, I started running away. I started getting involved in gangs. I started doing drugs at a young age, and I moved and I left with my dad. And you would think it's my dad, so who has good parents in here? Real quick, who has good parents? Sometimes they're hard on you guys, but they're good, right? They want what's best for you, for the most part, all of you. Well, when I moved with my father, 
All he could do was give me drugs. So at the age of 12 years old, 13, I was doing smoking heroin, methamphetamines, smoking crack. I was already gangbanging. I was already getting in shootouts. I'd already been stabbed by the time I was 12 years old. I had no purpose. And even on top of that, when I was 12 years old, my stepmom, who was 22, had a relationship with me for nine months. And she was on heroin, she was on drugs. That's not her fault. That's not, she's, we've already gotten over that. That's forgotten stuff. She was abused. When pe her people hurt people, because she had been hurt when she was younger, she did the same thing to me. And you know, we, we were already beyond that, but for nine months I had a relationship with her. I got over-sexualized at a really young age. I thought it was normal, and it wasn't just her, but there was times where her friends would come over, and then it was another woman that was, that was a lesbian that would mess me, with me too, and my mind started getting over-sexualized. These demons started getting inside of me. I, was, I already didn't have a good relationship with my mom, and now my stepmom, this was happening with my stepmom and another woman, so I became over-sexualized really quick at a young age. I thought that the only way I could find love was through being with another person. So already at 13 years old, I'm getting locked up. So not only have I been molested, but now I'm getting locked up at a young age. Now I'm getting incarcerated because I think that I'm, I gotta be down for my homies. Because why? My dad's absent most of the time. He's in and out of prison. He's not around. But I know I could rely on my camaradas. I could rely on my homies at the time to have my back. Can somebody give me a bottle of water too? Sorry. Um, I know I could rely on them. And you know what it did to me? I would get locked up, and then guess who was gonna be there for me every time I was locked up? Who? That's the only, yeah, my mom. That's who none of my homies were. None of those, my mom was a good mom. She was, she wanted the best for me, even though my dad was the way he was. Who's been in juvenile hall in here? Anybody? Nobody, okay, if you, if you guys wanna talk to me afterwards, if anybody's been incarcerated or locked up in juvenile hall, I'll pray for you guys afterwards. From the bottom of my heart, I pray and I believe for you. Why? Because, oh, thank you. No, I'll throw it. Tell us, man. Hey, what's up, brother? Come on, man. Come on, man. Thanks. Come on. Thanks, man. Hugs all the time. We're a family. You know, we're the Catholic Church. We give hugs to each other. We're all family. Um, so at a young age, I started getting incarcerated. That's all I knew. And so I would go from city to city, from family member to family member. And I didn't know my purpose. I felt like nobody loved me. I lived with all my tias, I lived with all my uncles, I lived with my grand both my grandmas, I lived with North, and I couldn't find my purpose, I couldn't find my place in life. And people would tell me about God, especially the Catholic Church, get that out of here. No, oh, Catholics are crazy. Worshiping Mama Mary, worshiping saints, man. That's what I used to think in my head. I want you to know where I was in my life. Homeless, sleeping in parks. Sleeping behind benches, I get locked up, I got out, I had nowhere to go, I was sleeping on the streets. Or I was sleeping from person to person because I needed somewhere to stay and I wasn't responsible, I was on drugs. I couldn't get my life right. Disrespecting my mom all the time. Who has a good mom in here? Again, love them. If they're hard on you, love them. Love your parents. Yeah, they're gonna be on you sometimes, but it's worth it in the long run. Maybe I wouldn't have been locked up so much. Maybe so many people wouldn't have been hurt, including my mom and my dad and my grandma, disappointed over and over again if I would have just listened. So I gotta give say one thing to all of you. When I was your age, I was locked up. I was gang banging and all over the world. I would never come to a place like this. And I gotta say, I'm gonna take off my hat and say I'm proud of every single one of you. Like seriously, you guys are already making big moves. I was doing punk stuff back then. Y'all are doing adult stuff. Y'all are being young men and young ladies by coming to this event this weekend because when I was your age, I was all living in the world. So can I get a round of applause, everybody, that they showed up this weekend. They could have said no. They could have said no. You know, they could have said no. I said no a million times. I would punch my uncle. He would try to take me to a retreat with Victory Outreach, you know? Man, get the, they would try to put me in the car and I would go in the car and we would be right down the road from it. And I would start kicking the windshields, I remember. Like 16, 17 years old. I just didn't want nothing to do with it. So I gotta say I'm proud of y'all. That's big stuff right there. And then as I moved around, I found myself yearning for attention 
because I'm pushing all my family away and I'm getting all the attention in the wrong places. So by the time I'm 18 years old, I'm doing my first prison term. My mental health is out of control because I've been doing drugs since I was a young age. I'm over-sexualized, out of control. Seriously, this is true. You guys are all, this is your age. It brings no happiness. It brought me no happiness all those years. I thought, oh, this person's nice. Man, she looks cute. Oh, you know what? This one's nice to me too. Hey, she's nice. And thinking that I was finding love and I was not even looking at God, the real love, the love that he gave us right here on the cross. I was trying to find love in all the wrong places. And then when I would go to prison, what did I start doing? I started getting involved in the gangs in there. I thought it was the right thing to do. That was the way the devil wanted me. He didn't want me to be happy. He didn't want my family to be proud of me. He didn't want me to have a job. He didn't want me to have my own place. He didn't want me to go to college. He didn't want me to be a success. He didn't want me to defend all my family. Because by this time in my life, I had already lost three of my friends, someone who I called my brother, had been shot in his head, Another person that I called my brother, white gorilla, car accident, drinking and doing drugs, car accident, went right into a pool. The, they crashed right into the pool and the pool actually went right into him. He was so talented. He was an amazing young man. I'm telling you, when it came to martial arts, this dude could, he was knocking out people left and right. He was awesome, no, he was. Taekwondo, Jiu Jitsu. Very smart and intelligent and very loving also. These, men, these young men all lost their lives. Why? Because they chose a path that wasn't of God. There was even last week, I just want to say, there was two kids, 17 years old, out in like Philadelphia or Pennsylvania. 17 years old, she was pregnant. There were two, two Latinos, there were two Rasa. They were parked in an alleyway, another car pulls up and shoots them both because they weren't in the right place at the right time. You shouldn't be out at night. But when you're in the world and you're not focusing on the things of God, the world's easy to take you away in the blink of an eye. You can get in a car accident and somebody's life's taken away. So for years I was an anti-Catholic. For years, gang banging, drugs, couldn't get my life together, okay? And then in 2011, a big change happened in my life because I started seeking God out because I was facing 11 years in prison. My son was just born. I have a son, he's 17 years old, by the way. Good kid, man. He's a really good kid. So when I see you guys, I don't see, I see a young men that are gonna be successful. Like, I see young ladies that are gonna be, my, my little sister's 18 years old. She just turned 18 years old. I see little young ladies that are gonna be successful if you focus on the right things of life. So I'm facing 11 years in prison. I'm like, man, this is going to be my second, my second prison term. I've already been locked up like a hundred times in my life. My son was just born and I just wanted something different. And this priest came out. He started preaching. He was talking about new life in Christ. And I'm like, hey, I did this, but I started crying out of control. And I started like, I don't know why I was crying. I just wanted something new. I wanted something more. And I remember just like, you know, boogers falling down, really crying. And they were saying, hey, what's wrong with Cuchillo over there? What's wrong with Blade? That's what they used to call me. What's wrong with Blade? Why is he crying like that? And then all of a sudden, this, of all people, a Moreno called me to his door, my brother, a black brother. And he says, come here, bro. And I'm like, hey, I can't go to your door, homie. Yeah, they're going to stab me if I go to your door. Because that was the truth. In prison, you don't mix races in there. You don't mix races. That don't happen like that. And so, you know what I did? I went right there by his door. And I kind of kicked it on the side so I could hear him talking through the door. He was a Jehovah Witness. So I was like, oh man, you know what? He was telling me all the right things. I was learning about Jehovah, learning about the faith, their faith. And I thought it was the truth at the time. And you know what? It led me to do good. Don't get that wrong. They're not bad people, but they do not have the truth. Learning our faith is extremely important because even while I was a wit unbaptized publisher with the witnesses, I was still doing drugs, I was still stabbing people. And when I had the opportunity to, forgive me father, I was sleeping with every other good girl I could trying to find love and comfort. That's not the thing, watch out. Men and young ladies, we're all hurt. We don't know what we want, so be, watch out to being hurt, don't be hurt. 
I hurt a lot of young ladies in my life. Seriously, young men, let's treat young ladies with respect and love like we would treat the Blessed Mother. The same way young ladies with the young men, like we would Christ our King. That's how we should do it. I didn't know that, so I'm going to become a Jehovah Witness, but I started studying it, and I was like, who's Jesus? Let me ask you that question. And whoever can answer who Jesus is, these have been blessed by the true, the true cross. So they're like third degree relics right here. They've been, they've been touching the, the cross, the true cross of Christ. Can anybody answer, raise your hand please, who is Jesus Christ? Well, he says, I saw both your hands, go for it. Our Lord and Savior. Okay, that's one, can you give me a... Um, you could say our best friend also. Okay, no, those are both, you know what, because you guys raised your hand, I'm gonna give you guys these. Awesome. Can anybody give me the definition of what the catechism, what you guys learned? Who is Jesus Christ? What do you say? Son of, God. Son of God. What do you say back there? Okay, yeah, yeah, I, I, you know what? Just because you guys raise your hands and other people aren't, but what I want to go for, what is it, brother? Huh? The way he is the way. No, he is the way. Let me give you, because I want to give a girl one. Give my, my young sister right here one. God bless you. May be blessed. You know what? That's it. You know what? I want to say this. He is the third person of the Trinity, right? Is he God? He's God, right? He's God, the third person of the Trinity. The Trinity are three persons in one, correct? We need to know this. Jesus is who? God the Son. God, he's God the Son. Okay, God the Son, but he's God, all right? Jehovah Witnesses don't believe that Jesus is God. So watch out for them. They change the Bible a lot, and I noticed that when I started studying. You need to be prepared. You're going to come to a point where a Jehovah Witness or a Protestant, a Protestant, is going to approach you with different questions. I want to help arm you to always live in victory. So as I was studying, I noticed that they weren't the truth. They said that Jesus was a God, and that Jesus was a God, the God. He's the God, not a God, with a lowercase g. And so as I was studying, I was like, remember, I'm in prison at this time too. So I'm back in prison again. I'm like, you know what? Maybe the Jehovah Witnesses aren't for me. And so I started studying under Protestants. Anybody ever heard of Protestant? Protestante? Cristiano? You guys know those other, not the Catholic, you guys have ever heard of them? So what happened was I started studying underneath them. I need you guys to know this. Please, because it's, it's a part of my journey and I'm doing it while I'm in prison. And so I'm growing in the faith, but the thing about Calvinists and Jehovah Witnesses, they're anti-Catholics. So can anybody tell me what an anti-Catholic is? Yeah. Yeah, someone who's against the Catholic Church. I need you guys to understand this. You guys are going to face people, here you go, that are going to say things like, Wait up, let me ask you this question before I even make this response. Can you guys please your, raise your hands in the air? Everybody, I need the servers in the back. No, no, wait up. Who's a Christian in here? Raise your hand. Who's a Christian? Come on, who's a Christian in here? Come on. Do we not know this? Who's on the cross right there? You know, you know what a Christian is? It's a believer and a follower of Christ. Okay, I need you guys to understand this. 2,000 years ago, we all need to raise our hands. We're all Christians. I'm studied in this. Trust me. Trust and believe this. I know it may seem a little alarming to you, but we're the original Christians. Jesus built our church. Not, those other churches were built by man. T.D. Jade, Saddleback Church, all the non-denominational churches. Jesus built our church. And if a Christian is a follower of Christ, how do we get salvation? He died for us on the cross. A Christian is a follower of Christ. Don't let them say Christian or Catholic. What's up, brother? Did you have your hand raised? Okay, I thought you did. I was gonna get you right now. So who's a Christian in here? I need you guys, I'm not lying, I swear. Be proud to be a Catholic Christian. We're the original Christians. It transformed my life. It wasn't in the Calvinism. It wasn't in Protestantism. 
He wasn't even saying, oh, I'm born again. Are you born again or I accept Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior? I did that a hundred times. It didn't work for me. If I got out and they had good music. You guys ever go to those churches that had like a big band, drums. They have like everything, the stages. The focus is on the band and not on Jesus. And I did that for years. I was leaders in these churches. 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 people thinking I was all that on Sunday and at my Bible study. And then I was slamming heroin the whole week and having sex with the women who were in the church, even though I was married. How was I being a good Christian right there? Not being real. I was being fake. I was. I was a horrible person. That wasn't being real. We have to live out our faith and let it be active. We can't just say I'm Catholic and then on the side we're drinking alcohol or smoking marijuana. Or we're doing things that are against what our family wants. When we say we're Catholic, we got to learn our faith and embrace it. Amen? Okay, I need you guys to copy after me real quick. I need you guys, okay? I believe. I receive. I, receive. I, achieve. I achieve. This is what I want you guys to do today. Something that's going to embrace one thought, one thing. Because at the end, I'm going to ask people if you guys got anything out of this. I'm going to ask. Please, if there's just one thing you learn, one thing today. Because I'm going to go around the room and I'm going to ask people who's learned something. Because I want you guys to learn. I want you guys to grow. I just don't want it to be about, praise God for it, but I don't want this to just be a another kumbaya Catholic retreat out here. I want you guys to know when you go back in the world again, it's not gonna be all joyful like this and you gotta be ready to fight. You gotta be willing to learn your faith. Who takes the Eucharist in here? What is it? Body, Body blood, soul and divinity. Soul and divinity. Soul and divinity, we need to make sure we add that. Body, blood, soul and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ. And when you guys go to the Eucharist, if you have any stress, if you have any worries, if you have any pains, or if you know anybody that's struggling in your life, take it up to the Eucharist. Take it up to Jesus, to that sacrifice. Why? Because there is power in the Eucharist. There is life giving power in the Eucharist. The Catechism of the Catholic Church says it's the source and summit of our faith. The Eucharist is everything, but only 27% of people believe that the Eucharist is really his body and blood, soul and divinity. Who really believes in it here that it's his body, blood, soul and divinity? Everybody, we got everybody almost in here? Okay, no, we need to. When you're going through struggles in life, later on in life, it may not make sense to you right now, but you're going to have to handle responsibilities. Some people are going to be going through college, getting into relationships, having to pay bills. Being active in your faith will help you go through life and navigate it. Who wants to live with their mom and dad their whole life? Who wants to live, praise God, if you want to live with your mom and dad your whole life, that's awesome. I know a lot of Latino families that the kids, they live there all their whole life. I got some homeboys that have been living with their grandma their whole life, you know. They live in the back garage. You know, but you know, who wants their mom and dad to drive them to a date when they're 25 years old? You want that? Huh? You guys want that? Oh, yeah, I'm going to go on a date tonight. Hey, okay, I'll drop you off, mijo. I'll drop you off, you know, I'll come back, you know, and then they walk in there, we'll escort you to the table. No, but if you live your life right and you practice your faith and you go through college, it'll allow you to become successful, get your jobs, move in life, have good relationships. This is important. I'm trying to give knowledge here because I want you all to be successful. I've been fasting this week for every single one of you, even though I didn't know you, that you guys would hear God's love and not hear my words because my words are blank if I don't have God's love in it. And so it leads me to, you know what? I just couldn't stop using drugs. I started selling drugs really heavily at this time. This is 2014. And I just couldn't get out of that life. Couldn't get out of that lifestyle. I was struggling. My wife kicks me out. 
I'm on the streets again. I'm homeless again. Now I go back to my homeboys back in San Bernardino. I went from San Diego back to San Bernardino. Now I'm doing the same things I was doing before. And I didn't tell you, my wife, she was Catholic. I ripped down every Virgin Mary off the walls. I broke down, I broke every statue she had. I did. I didn't know the truth. The devil, the devil had me, my, my, my mind wasn't good. I ripped down every crucifix, broke them, threw them out. And not just with her, I got with another woman after that in 2014, after being homeless on the streets and started living with her. Look it, I'm never even getting my life together. I'm living with person after person after person, living on the streets, living in prison, never taking care of myself. I was a straight loser. I was pathetic, hurting people. I can't imagine how many people I've hurt in my life. It still affects me to this day and I go through struggles because of it. Big struggles. And so I'm being with this one woman, her name is Bernadette. We pray for her. If she's out there, her name, you know her name is Bernadette. I haven't seen her in years since I've spent at least eight years. But she was so scared of me that she invited a couple over. Because not only was I abusive mentally and emotionally and spiritually, but physically I was abusive. I was a horrible person. Seriously, I was, um, I need you to see how bad I was. I had a legion of demons festering inside of me all these years, living in the world, never having a relationship with God. No Eucharist, no sacrament of confession to be in a state of grace, no rosary, no sacramentals, no mass. These are all the gifts and instruments we have. The communion of the saints, Mama Mary praying for us. I had none of that and I had no knowledge about it. So I struggled from church to church trying to get it right in these different so-called Christian churches when we're the true Christian church. We're the Catholic church. We're the Roman Catholic church. The church Jesus built in Matthew 16, 18. He told the first Pope, St. Peter, you are Peter on this rock. I will build my church. The gates of hell shall not prevail. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. A church was being created. You guys are that church. You guys have 2,000 years of rich familia. I just know some of my heritage goes back to the Navajos and I go back to the Aztecs, Spaniards, but our, our faith goes back 2,000 years. Jesus built a church 2,000 years ago. You guys are that church. I had none of it. And I struggled and I, man, I wish I, sometimes I say, I wish I was raised Catholic. Maybe I would've still gone through all those struggles, but I wish what you, I had what you guys had. I wish I had events like this to go to not being incarcerated and locked up, going to raves and parties and clubs, doing all kinds of nutty things like that, getting in these big old riots in prison. I had been in a riot like 300 men, everybody just attacking each other, and you're just kind of like, what do I do? Stabbing at everybody, watching for the right color, sitting in jail or prison for young ladies, men, ladies, it's horrible in there. Once we locked up, you can't open the door. You're stuck in there. They take away everything from you. People, people are dying in there. And other things happen to people in there also that isn't good. And I struggled for years on the streets because I never knew what God's plan was for me. I didn't know his destiny. I didn't know the purpose behind my life. And I never, I never even thought about it because I started living a bad life at such a young age. Mental health depression, bipolarism, 5150, addiction problems, manic depressant. They said I was everything. They said I would never get my life together. They said there was no way that man will ever be able to take care of himself. There is no way that man will be productive. I've gone through a million jobs in my life. Go from job to job to job to job to job to job, never being consistent. Breaking heart, relationship after relationship after relationship. Broken, 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 broken. Everybody that I would come across, I would hurt, 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 hurt. That was my life. 
And then she called over two people because she was scared. Joshua and Carol Betancourt. He's actually a lay chaplain at St. Jude's in um, Fullerton. But I didn't know this guy. He was a convert. So everything I asked him, don't call no man father, it says in the Bible. He showed me where in the Bible men are called father. And I talked to him, I told him about baptism. Were you born again? And he goes, yeah, I've been born again. And he tells me the Bible way. And then he shows me in the Bible where we're born again, where Jesus says you have to be born again of water and spirit. That's being born again, baptism. It's not saying, Jesus Christ, I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior, and you get born again. That's not the Catholic biblical version of being born again. And so he could answer all my questions. But remember who I was. I'm still doing heroin. I'm still smoking meth. I'm still doing coke, marijuana, drinking, shrooms, acid, pills, everything that I could get my hands on. I'm still doing them. That's my lifestyle. But then I get invited to go to mass. And I go, you know what? I'll go to Mass. This is in 2014. You know what? I will go to Mass. And I remember going for the first time. I had a hat just like this on, actually. I remember being in there, and I'm, it's Life Teen. So they're playing a good contemporary Christian song that I like. You know, I'm like, yeah, I got my hands up, you know, in the Life Teen service. And I got my hands up, and this guy taps me on my shoulder. And I'm like, what the heck is this guy? I didn't know I wasn't supposed to have my hat on in the Mass. We don't wear our hats in Mass, right? I came from a church where everybody wears anything. And I got mad at him. I'm thinking in my head, like, what the? This dude really just touched me like that? And it ruined my experience because I went home and I treated my fiance bad. Shattered some glass, broke some things, glass all over the place like a maniac, you know, being dumb. And then I got invited next week to another mass at this Sacred Heart Chapel, okay? And I was upset when I got there because it wasn't mass. It was a bunch of ex-Protestants who became Catholic, and they were talking about how the Protestants were false. And I was thinking in my head, I was listening, and I'm like, man, they're talking about my church, because I was Protestant. I thought I was, at least, you know? But I was baptized as a baby, just to let everybody know. When I was a baby, I was baptized as a Catholic. So there was a seal on me. There was a marking already on me, even though I was going through the wilderness and struggling in my life, going down all these paths, all this hurt, all this abuse that had gone on to me. Now I was giving it to other people, but there was a mark still on me. God had a plan for my life. I knew he had a major plan for my life, and I wasn't going to stop. And so what happens was, I get invited to this retreat, I get mad, I actually walk outside. Why do I walk outside? Because I'm mad and I actually kick the pew. Like, you know, I kick the pew, bam! And I walk out and everybody looked at me like, what's this dude doing? I'm like, man, forget this, man, I'm out of here. I don't want to hear this. I don't want to hear this stuff about well, talking bad about Protestants. I am a Protestant. And I walked out and I went around the corner and I went back to this Catholic church and there was this little old lady outside. She was so loving. And she went up to me and she goes, what's wrong? And I told her, they're talking about my church in there. I'm not Catholic. And she goes, there's a reason why God brought you here. There's a reason why God brought you here. Just open your heart. And I started crying and she hugged me. And there was a statue of the, of the Blessed Virgin out front. I remember going to it and saying, if Catholics are Christians, why are you in front of the church? What the... I literally cussed. I was so mad, I was crying. If the Catholics are Christians, why are you in the front of the church? Because at the time, I didn't think Catholics were Christians. I was taught that. I didn't know the truth. I've read the entire catechism of the Catholic Church. I teach this. This is what I do. And I looked at her and I said, why are you in front of the church? And then this thought came over me. This rush came over me. She said, because your eternal salvation came from my womb. Jesus came from here. That's why I'm here. It wasn't to worship her, it was to honor her and respect her the same way that we love our moms. That's the way I needed to respect Jesus' mom. And you know what, I went on fire after that. I started learning the faith. I go, you know what, 
this is right, but I was still doing drugs. I was still on drugs all the time, okay? So I started learning the faith, going. I went to a Crucio. Anybody heard of Crucio? De Colores? De Colores? Yeah, De Colores, yeah, amen. I went to this retreat. It was a four-day retreat like you guys here. Four days, and it was beautiful. They taught me about Our, they taught me about Our Lady of Guadalupe. They kind of ran you through the rosary. They had a bunch of different, like, um, conferences and talks that were powerful. We had adoration. I was learning all kinds of new stuff. But with the end of those four days, I didn't want to leave. I said, God, please, man, let me stay here. I'll, I'll become a priest right now. I don't want to go back out there because I've been sober for the first time in a long time. I was sober for four days. And I felt something beautiful and clean inside of me. And I was like, I don't want to go, Lord. But you know what? When I left, you know what happened? I didn't know how to pray the rosary. I didn't, wasn't Catholic. I didn't have all the instruments and prayers to live in success. So what happened when I left? A hundred more demons came inside of me. So if I thought I was becoming better when I got out, I became like a super gangbanger. I started selling drugs heavily. I picked up a bad drug debt. Even though I was still going to RCIA, I started getting out of control. I was 121 pounds. I'm 190 right now. But I was 121 at one time. I was sucked up. Boy, I was. I had been up for three weeks at a time. I didn't care about my life. Was My life was falling apart. And then finally one day, after living this way, I said, God, I need help. And I remember begging God one day, take this away from me. Take this drug addiction away from me. Take this monster out of me. I don't want him no more. And I was crying in front of this Catholic church. I remember this church. And it's actually my parish to this day. But I begged him. I begged him that day, please, Lord, take away this addiction. You said if I ask anything in your name, I was yelling at him. I was, I was so mad. I was so, I was just, my life was, I was living on the streets. I was from place to place, getting in trouble, trouble, treating people bad, bad, getting in shootout after shootout. I was like, how did I get to this? How did my life get this bad? What happened? I know I love God. I thought I did at least. And I begged him, take away my addictions that day. You know what? And he took my, my addictions away that day. But he didn't take it away the way I thought because I left and I took off. Instead of going into the church, it was open. Instead of going into that church, I didn't go into that church. I went to some young lady's house. Things happen. I get cleaned up. Um, I almost go crazy in my head like I want to kill myself. I go to my grandma's house and I'm like, you know what, I gotta get clean. I've been up too long. I'm going out of control in my mind. Like really, I was flipping out. I thought people were talking to me. I thought people were following me all over the place. I didn't care who I hurt, I didn't. I was on a path of destruction. I went to my grandma's house that day. I remember going inside and I'd say, I love you grandma, you know, I go see my nana, rest in peace nana. I'm only, hey, you know, I'll tell you one thing real quick before, until I, I'll continue the story. I'm right here speaking because of my nana's novenas. Straight up, straight up. I'm my nana prayed the novena, rest in peace, nana. I know, she, I know she's praying for me. I know I love my nana, she died last year. Don't take your family members for granted. She prayed novena after novena for me. And I know her love helped me change because I would never think I'd be right here speaking to all of y'all. This is a privilege. This is an honor. I'm a scumbag. But Jesus Christ and his love and his mercy and our faith, he's so beautiful. I love him. I just like shouting it every day. It's every day. I do this all day long. You're going to learn why right now. And you know what? That day I begged him to take it away from me. I saw my grandma. I gave her a hug. I love her. I love you, Nana. Uh, and if she's in purgatory still, I pray for her. I don't want to take that away from her. If she's in purgatory by chance, we got to remember that. But if she's in heaven, pray for us. Um, I remember going and she goes, you look so beautiful, gives me a hug. She tells me, go parallel, your, go parallel, park your car, go get it behind my car, she's gonna go get us some food. And so as I go park my car, I didn't, man, I was out of my mind. I've been up for three weeks. I'm backing up to parallel park. This SUV comes from behind me and hits me from behind. I have my music really loud. I automatically think it's because I owe a $5,000 drug debt and I had been shot at. The side of my van had bullet holes in it. 
I've been stabbed in my leg. I've been jumped a couple times already in these moments of living in the world right there like that. This is a matter of weeks. I'm just telling you, this is just a couple weeks all this stuff happened. Man, I'm barely skimming the surface of all the crazy stuff that happened in my life. Man, I don't want you guys to have this kind of life. That's why I'm sharing the Catholic faith in my story with you. I don't want you to have to go through my story for you to understand what your purpose and destiny in life is. You don't gotta be locked up for 17 years in prison for you to have that. You know, you don't gotta have multiple accidental murders on your, on your record for you to get your life right. Friends dying. You don't need to have to go through all that to get your life right. You could do it right now. Whether you're a woman or a man, there's a lot of women prisons. So I'm not just speaking this to the men. It's as easy for women to, for it to happen to them too. So all of a sudden that car, they hit me from behind. One guy jumps out with a shotgun, like, whoo! Another guy jumps out with a pistol. And I'm like, oh man, what is this? And I take off and I go on a high speed chase. In my head, I didn't know there were cops, but if I knew there were cops at the time, I still would have ran. It was in my nature, I was running. And I did, I took off, I went down a couple blocks and I was driving in my rear view mirror. Don't do that ever, please. Don't drive in your rear view mirror. When I was a tweaker, that's what tweakers do. Cause they're always looking behind them. Oh weird, you know? I was driving in my rear view mirror and when I looked up, I go, man, those are the police. Oh, it's the police. I literally thought I was running for my life. I thought someone was trying to kill me. And I go, oh man, it's the police. And then I go, you know what? I look down, I'm about to hit the back of a car. My life, after what I'm gonna tell you, my life's never gonna be the same. My life would change, and I hope this wouldn't happen to you guys. Drinking, drugs, partying. I was right there, I was about to hit the back of a car, I jumped in the bike lane. A very beautiful man would lose his life that day because of my stupidity. A very beautiful man would be murdered that day. A very beautiful man's life would be taken because of my actions. Even though I wasn't trying to kill him, my lifestyle, the drugs, the gang banging, the ignorance, the anger, the violence that was in me, a very beautiful man that died that day, his name was Randolph Stevenson, he was riding a bike. My life will never be the same. It just takes one drink, a couple drinks. It don't have to be you up for three weeks like me. It don't take, you don't need that. It just takes you taking a few shots, all of a sudden you're going down the road, someone's in your passenger seat, and it happens to you. So then all of a sudden now, I'm in, I'm in jail facing life in prison. 25 years to life at first. Capital murder, and then on top of that I can get struck out. Because this isn't my first time in prison. This is 2015. This is my first time in prison, it's like my, my third prison term, and I've probably been locked up over 100 times. So it wasn't new, it was the same stupid thing, but I was so upset that I was gonna get life in prison or struck out, and I would just have to spend life behind bars, that I was gonna kill myself. I made a noose, I did, I made a noose. I didn't wanna be life in prison, I didn't. Even though I was stupid, I was feeling sorry for myself. When you guys hurt somebody else, don't feel sorry for yourself. We have a tendency of doing that as humans. We hurt other people, we want to feel sorry for ourselves. No, I should have felt sorry for his family. I should feel sorry for all the ones that I hurt, but I didn't, and I made a noose. I made a noose, I was gonna hang myself. My son, just a couple weeks before that, he called me a loser and a fake Christian. He's like, how could you kill somebody? You're supposed to be a Christian, Dad. And he didn't want to talk to me. I was, everybody in my life was like, I thought you were, I thought you were going to church. Nobody knew I was going to church and I was doing drugs and partying. But everybody thought I was living my life and doing good and I wasn't. I was a fake. I had a mask on for everybody to see, but I wasn't really living out. It's like somebody saying they're Catholic, but not knowing their faith. It's like somebody saying they're a basketball player, but they don't know how to play basketball. That's why it's important. <laughs> that guy's funny right there. <laughs> hey, that's why it's important that we learn it. We learn it, we practice it. The more you practice it, the more you learn it, the more you're gonna embrace it. So I was gonna kill myself. I called my son on the phone. I said, hey, mijo, I love you. And I just wanted to let him know that I loved him. I'm proud of him. He's an amazing young man, man. He's on fire right now. He's a good looking kid, man. I love my son. I tell him all that now. 
We have a, our relationship is better. Um, but that day I called him up, I told him I love you. I, dude, I, like, I just wanna let you know I'm proud of you. And he told me, Dad, I forgive you. I miss you. And I can't wait to see you again. It's like, boom, something hit me because I didn't even wanna read the Bible before that. For a month and a half, get it away from me. I don't want nothing to do with the word. I don't want nothing to do with praying. I don't want nothing to do with God. I was going to do life in prison. I just killed another person. My stupidity living in the world again. But if he said, Dad, I miss you. I forgive you. And I can't wait to see you. And something changed inside of me because I went into my cell that day. And for the next three days, I cried. And I begged God for his forgiveness. And I could see every person that I hurt. Seriously, I could see every person that I hurt. And I cried and I asked God, forgive me, but use me. Remember, I'm not Catholic at this time. But I had had some experiences with the Catholic faith, right? And so God says, and I said, God, just use me. If I have to do life in prison, just use me. So you know what he did? The first thing he did was he said, okay, I'll use you. I made a rosary out of a trash bag. Because where I was at, we didn't have no rosaries. There's a lack of resources for Catholics that are incarcerated. We lose a lot of brothers and sisters every year, over 100,000 because there's a lack of catechesis. Once somebody gets incarcerated, we forget about them. So don't forget about your loved ones that are incarcerated. Send them something. You wanna know why? Because you can change while you're incarcerated. And I started learning how to pray the rosary. But I started learning that it's not just a prayer. I started learning that this is my battle weapon. This is how I battle now. Before, back in the days, I used to use a nine millimeter gun. Sometimes a 40. Sometimes a 45. But nowadays when I battle, I got a 60 millimeter cannon right here. Why do I call this my 60 millimeter cannon? What? 60 beads, yeah, who said that? Somebody, you say that? Good job, man, let me give you one of these right here. That's awesome. Let me give you one of these right here. There's 60 beads on it. Padre Pio says, it is the weapon of our time. Who prays the rosary in here? I, this is, man, let me tell you something. Who loves their family here? Who got family, moms and dads? Who loves their little brothers and sisters? This is the weapon right here. Don't take it for granted. This isn't just prayers. When I'm praying this, I'm, uh, earlier, when driving up here, I was praying for every single one of you. For your growth, for your transformation. As you go through these stages in life, you're going to go through a lot. It's not going to be easy, but praying the rosary became my best friend when I was in prison. It became my guide. I knew that the mother of my king, which is my mother, was interceding for me in, in heaven. And I know that she does anything for Jesus. Think about it. Remember when he turned water into wine? You guys remember that? Yeah. It wasn't his time, he said. He says, woman, it's not my time to do miracles. But because she changed his diapers, she kissed his, his boo-boos when he got hurt. She combed his hair. Every time he was scared at night, she would run in the room with him. It's okay, baby Jesus. It's okay, baby Jesus. She probably taught him how to read because St. Joseph was working. He had to take care of the family. So when she asked him to turn the water into wine, Jesus will do anything for his mama. Jesus loves his mama. So when I pray the rosary and I'm asking her to intercede for me, I know without a doubt, God is gonna make it happen. I know without a doubt, it's gonna come true because he loves his mom so much and she's gonna tell him, hey, do this. And Jesus always listens to his mama. So please, if we can pray our rosary, it was given to St. Dominic in the year 1208 AD. The Blessed Virgin came to St. Dominic, why? To battle against the devil, to battle against heresies and false teachings. We can come to truth when we pray our rosary, amen, what is this? Rosary, and so you know, I'm in there, I start, rosary, amen, I start praying the Holy Rosary every single day. But not just praying for myself, I'm praying for everybody else. I am begging for everybody else. So every single bead, I use it for my family. 
Did you guys know if somebody was breaking into your house right now, let me ask you this question, and attacking your family, what would you do? Fight them, right? What would you do if somebody was attacking your family? Fight them? Okay, yeah. What would you guys do if somebody was attacked, broke into your house and attacking your family? What would you do? Nothing? You would, yeah, you would fight them, right? You would go at them, protect them. This is what the rosary does. The enemy is attacking right now. When you guys go back out there, he prowls around like a roaring lion in search of someone to devour. Pray your rosary so you can start defending it. So before things start going wrong, you're already with your battle weapon. This is my sword. This is how I battle. It gave me protection. It helps me to not only pray for other people, but it's a double-edged sword. It convicts me. Because I'm asking God, when we do the Our Fathers, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. We are asking this prayer of him, of the almighty God. So we are internally transforming while we're praying for our family and friends to be externally healed if they're going through any struggles or to grow in their life and their relationship with God. And so the rosary became a part of me. So while I'm in there, I'm facing life. I thought I was never going to get out, but I'm preaching every day. I'm teaching the Catholic faith. I got the Catholic Bible in there, the catechism of the Catholic Church. I'm really learning the faith. I'm like, you know what? I'm not just going to become Catholic. I want to know everything that the Catholic Church has. Plus, I'm in prison. I had time to learn it. But while I was in there, I couldn't forgive myself because I had killed somebody. I still thought about his family. I still thought about like on the holidays, his grandkids don't have their grandpa. He had four grandkids. He had two adult children. I was thinking about the holidays. He's not there. And so I told the priest to come in. And he came in to visit me. And I told him, I can't forgive myself. This is the power of the sacrament of confession. Who goes to confession in here? Who's been in the last week? Yeah, awesome. Praise God, man. Everybody who's been in the last week, I got to give you guys props. Being in a state of grace is important. I met this priest. How's my time real quick? I'm good. Okay, I just want to make sure. Okay, okay, thanks. Appreciate that. So I met this priest and I told him I can't forgive myself. I know God forgives me, but I can't forgive myself. And he tells me, you know what? He stood up and he goes, he cussed at me actually. How the heck do you not believe that? How can you not forgive yourself? You think you're bigger than God? And I felt the thought. I was thinking in my head, like, I'm sad right now. I'm crying. I'm asking you to help me, and you're yelling at me. Like, but, but he knew I needed to be yelled at. Why? You want to know why? Because I'm macho. That's why. He knew that. He knew I needed to be taught and disciplined. He knew I needed that at that moment. And you know what? He even gave me the Eucharist. I wasn't Catholic at the time. So I wasn't communion. I didn't have my confirmation at the time. But he knew the power of the Eucharist. Remember, it is the light, it is the source and summit of our faith. There is power in it. You know, this guy gave me the Eucharist. There is. And when he gave it to me, something changed inside of me. And I said, God, I promise you, when I get out of prison, I'm going to start preaching. But not just preaching, I'm going to be teaching the Catholic faith. So the question is this. What is the sign of the cross? What is it? What does it mean? Okay, what is it? It's okay, see, okay, something else. So come on, somebody say it out loud. Holy Spirit, okay, thank you. Let me give you one over here. Who said that? Two of you? Okay. It's the Trinity. Every time you do the sign of the cross, you're calling, wait, you already got one, right? No, you didn't? Okay, here's one for you right there. Cool. Sweet. When you're doing the sign of the cross, do it for me real quick. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I like it. I like how my Mexican brothers and sisters, that little kiss of the cross, the young, like that, I like that one. I like different, different people do it different everywhere. But what is it? Holy Spirit, the Trinity. It's like a force field. Wherever you go, do it. When I go to the gym, I do the sign of the cross. When I go to the college, I go to Cal State San Bernardino, I'm working on my master's degree. Um, but when I go to Cal State, 
I do the sign of the cross. When I go to church, before I eat, everywhere I go. But what is the sign of the cross? What are you doing when you do the sign of the cross? Think about it. It's a sign of the cross. What is it? What is it? Where's the cross? When you're doing the sign of the cross, you're remembering that Cristo died for us. That's the main thing about the sign of the cross. We're calling the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit to be with us for protection because they protect us. And we're remembering that Jesus, he gave his life for us on the cross. So I got out of prison three years, three and a half years ago. I didn't get life. Praise God. Amen. Because God's good. But I told myself, I'm not just going to get out and have a good life. That's one thing. Because remember, I was always homeless my whole life. I never handled my bills. I never handled nothing. But I started practicing my Catholic faith strong. And I said, Lord, I want to live in victory. Well, every time I go to Mass, I really believe in the Eucharist. I go to adoration. I allow it to be in my life. And I need you guys to understand these little tips. You may not understand it all right now. It's like, what the heck is this guy talking about? He's all over the place. But when I started practicing and I became Catholic, my life became successful. Because I wouldn't be right here. Think about it. Or my boy Danny yesterday. You guys know my boy Danny Reese? That's my brother right there, man. You know, that's my, we're really close. You know, we wouldn't be here. He wouldn't have survived those, those 21 stab wounds. I wouldn't have survived all those years in prison if... At that special moment when the Holy Spirit starts calling you, see, the Holy Spirit calls us to do things and to give you a purpose. But if you don't listen when the Holy Spirit calls you, that's major because we've all been given gifts. We've all been given a destiny. God has a plan for maybe some of you. I'm looking for the next defenders of the church. I am. I'm looking for those young Men and women that want to defend their families by knowing about their faith more. That want to stand up for Jesus because they're learning about their faith more. That are out with me in L.A. I did the pro-life walk. And standing for pro-life. Because that's what we as Catholics do. When you see people being picked on at school, we're about social dignity, human dignity. Don't let nobody get picked on. Don't let nobody be alone. Don't let nobody feel like an outsider. Always make somebody feel included. Because when I was that sinner, when I was that guy, that murderer, when I was that guy that went against all the Ten Commandments, gangbanger, drug dealer, domestic violence, woman abuser, when I was all those horrible things, a bad son, a bad husband, a bad father, Jesus and his mercy and grace still opened up a door for me. And I'm sharing these truths here with you because I really believe from the bottom of my heart that if you want to live in victory and win, one part of it is the rosary. We already talked about that, okay? What else did we go through that was important? I talked about the rosary. What was another thing? Come on. What did we learn today? Eucharist? Yeah, thank you. Appreciate that. What else? Come on, somebody, you were listening. I, did I give you one of these already? Did you get one? Yeah, you got one already. You're, you're pretty outgoing. I like that. Keep being outgoing. Okay. Thank you. There you go. Can you please pass there to him? Pass that back there to you. Thank you. Appreciate you. And that no matter what, God is always willing to Yeah, God is no matter what. God is always willing to forgive, right? God is always willing to forgive. When we judge people, like I want to say this, it's good to judge. Okay, but listen to me. But we want to help our brothers and sisters go to a good place. Not judge them like we're, we have our noses up in the air like this. But if we see our brothers doing wrong, we're supposed to sharpen each other and build each other up and say, I love you, man. What are you going through? Is something wrong in your life while you're doing that? And open up. Men, communicate. It's all right to share your emotions with one another. Have friends, seriously. You're going to need people to talk to. It's not easy. When you get that opportunity, find somebody. Maybe somebody older. Get a guide. Get a mentor. Somebody in your life to help navigate you and guide you along. I have seven of them right now. And I did it at a later age, but I need them. I really need them from the bottom of my heart. Young ladies, please. 
I say this from the bottom of my heart. Watch out for young boys who don't have the right intentions. Please, I, I really want to say that I, I love you guys. You're little shining diamonds. Respect yourselves. Love yourselves, because men could be manipulative. I just want you to say that. I, I know this is, it's this age. I don't want you guys to be crying to me, crying to somebody like my little sisters were to me, or like my friends always were to me, or the girls that I used to hurt. You know, God has created you in the image of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and I see beautiful smiles. I see beautiful, intelligent women right here. I just want to remind you of that. You're special. Amen. Amen. You go get up real quick, guys. Get up real quick. Hallelujah. Every, everybody, you know what? I want to do this real quick. I want everybody to embrace with their arms like this. Please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, lock arms. Can we play a little music, brother? Just a little bit of music? I want you guys to, you know what, seriously, please. Let's take this serious real quick. God is good? All the time? God is good? All the time? Amen. So let's lock up, and I want us to pray for each other. Can you just play a little bit of music? Just for, just for a couple minutes. Just close your eyes. Please, don't leave nobody alone. Just put it on her, put it on her side or something like that. Yeah, there you go, young lady. Thank you. Leave nobody alone. We are the Catholic Church. We are one body. Please. Can we connect right here? We're family. Please, everybody. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. We're a family here. I, this is, we need to start seeing our family like this more. So everybody close your eyes. And I want you, the person next to you, whether it's left or right, I want you to intercede for them right now for a couple minutes and pray for them. Pray peace. Pray joy. Pray that all those fruits of the Spirit, the long-suffering, the respect, the guidance, the, the self-esteem inside of them. Pray that if there's something going on in their hearts that maybe they're afraid of talking about or just nervous of talking about, that you're praying for them right now, that the Holy Spirit inside of you is saying, Lord, if my brother or sister next to me needs healing, heal them. Let my love and let my faith heal them, Lord. Intercede for them. Any, any problems that may be going on in their, their lives, whether school, at home, any type of relationships. Just think about those things for one another, please. Just for another minute, please. Let us intercede for each other like the same way that Jesus didn't think it was too much to die for you on the cross, to be beaten and bruised, whipped, thrown on a cross, nailed naked on a cross, torn apart for you. So just please think about your neighbor just a little bit more. We love you, Lord. You're an awesome God. We thank you for the love and mercy that you've given us within our Catholic faith. We thank you for the instruments and tools, the rosary, the Eucharist, adoration, the communion of saints, all the sacraments that give us an outward sign of your, your inward grace and your love, Heavenly Father. We ask you just to come inside every single one of these, these young men and women's hearts, their souls, their minds, and let them know they're special. They are a shining diamond, Lord. You've created each one of these specifically and uniquely with a purpose to advance your kingdom. Whatever gifts, Holy Spirit, these young men and women may have, I ask you just to manifest in them eventually, Lord. Just grow inside of them. Let your will be done. Let not the world get a hold of these, these young men and women. This is a beautiful group of young men and women, Lord. Just. Keep them by your bosom. Holy Spirit, be with them. All the angels and saints, just pray for them always. We love you and praise you. And we'll all do it together. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Praise God. Any questions now? Any questions real quick? Anybody? Any questions at all? Anybody? Rosary bracelet, whoever has a question. There's a question right here. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, you know what? We actually did. Here you go. Here's, it's blessed right there by an awesome priest, too, bro. Uh, yeah, you know what? Actually, I did. What we did is we got the trash bag, and we would stretch it out. And they would stretch out this trash bag and stretch it out, and then you would twist it. Yeah, they actually made it really cool. Yeah, you would twist it and it would go, and it actually became 
almost exactly like this, but smaller, you know? Yeah, but I just want to say thank you guys. Any more questions? How's my experience with the Catholic Church? I love being Catholic. So now as you guys see right here, let me, as I got this right here, I know you guys don't have your phones on you, but I have a YouTube channel. So I know that not only am I Catholic, but I defend the Catholic Church on YouTube and I talk all over the country. I'm with Catholic Answers and Virgin Most Powerful Radio. So I go to defend the faith right here. This is my banner right here because I believe there's truth in it. So my experience in the Catholic Church, man, college graduate, I'm sober. I have my own place. I'm about to buy a house next year. I got to drive a brand new car. All on my own. But it's practicing my faith. Practicing the faith. Living it out. Going to Mass all the time. Living out my faith. That's what's doing. I just came back from Philadelphia. They paid for me to go out there and talk in front of a bunch of cops. Who would have thought? Praise God. You know, but who would have thought? Only Jesus knew that. Only Jesus knew I would be coming over here and talking to you and bringing Him glory. Because I'm nobody. This suit, this hat is nothing. But what He did for us on the cross, that's everything. And thank you. It's an honor to be able to share with you guys my life and to encourage you to become the best Catholic version of yourselves possible. Because becoming Catholic, it changed the entire spectrum of my life. If everything became new. I tried all those other religions. They didn't have nothing on the faith because when I get like thoughts of doing something wrong, I pray the rosary. When I'm feeling hurt, instead of going back to that bad attention I used to get, I drop on my knees and I ask the Blessed Virgin to pray for me. I'm not doing it by myself no more. That's why I had you guys hold hands. We're a familia. And then on top of that, I bet you, there was angels. Your guardian angels were all through the lines, whoever wasn't connected. And we were all connected together. This is the Catholic Church. It's beautiful. Thank you. Amen. So I have cards. I'll pass out cards later on, too. If you guys want to check out my YouTube channel. So. Oh, yeah. We got another question. Okay, sorry. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, yeah. How did you open So you guys heard of El Sembrador? There's a, yeah, there's a big Spanish ministry called El Sembrador, ESNI. It's a Catholic production company. They have radio stations. Well, I'm part of their English ministry. So I'm part of the English ministry called The Sower. Because you know El Sembrador is The Sower, right? So what I do is I sow seeds. I'm planting seeds for Jesus Christ. I plant those seeds, and I pray as we're planting them, it grows. And so the way we met was, I'm a speaker. I was going to the sower. Me and Danny connected, and he's like, hey, Eric, you want to go with me up to Northern California? We're going to do a retreat for two days. You can speak for two days. I'm going to rap. I'm going to preach in the name of Jesus. And we became best friends after that. He's been like my role dog for the last year. We do podcasts together. We're going to do a rap song together in the future. Yeah, I used to. I used to back in the days. I'm writing something right now. But no, 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 no. No, that's, that's Danny. That's Danny's stuff right there. Yeah. Thank you Amen. so much, Eric. All right, guys, real quick. Um, Eric, you still going to say something? No, no, I'm good. I'm good. Praise God. Let me turn this off for you. All right, one more time. Give him a round of applause. Thank you so much. Jesus! Come on, Jesus! 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 It is the name that is above all names. Jesus! The demons flee and run. Jesus! The demons hide because Jesus will take them out. Amen. Yeah, amen. God bless you guys. He got me pumped up right now. Yeah, it was. Yeah.